audible? Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, thank doctor. You. Thank you, thank you. So we had few excellent talks, obviously, and uh, uh, we heard Dr. Sabu speaking about SGL2 and CKD, and then we have Dr. Jasji speaking on NAFLD and uh, particularly emphasizing on SGL2 and GLP1 receptor honest. So thank you, Panacea. Thank you, Dr. Ashukosh Mishra and Dr. Pallavi Mishra for your kind invitation and giving me this talk. What I could make from out from the brochure that probably the flavor of the whole symposium is SGL2. Because I have seen uh, over the last two days, it has been spoken about a number of times. We are just about dissecting each and every molecule of SGL2. And now we are in this era of a dual SGL2 inhibitors. So thank you once again. And the talk today would be on SOTA glucosin. So as we all are aware of the diabetes is a chronic and complex disease with a huge budget burden of complications, particularly CKD and CVD and the whole uh, onus of the physicians and uh, diabetologists presently would be to manage type 2 diabetes with this in keeping these two in mind. But the top being focused happens to be sotaglyphosin. But as we all know that way back in 1835, a French sci scientist or chemist I would say, looked through the root bark of the apple tree and came out with a compound, chlorizidin which had an impact on improving the blood glucose. And that led to the invention of SGLT. Now there were about six such isomers and we are only concerned about the two major ones, SGLT1 and 2, because these are the ones which have been widely studied because of its fundamental role in glucose and sodium transport across the breast border of the gut and kidney cells. So obviously, uh, everything about diabetes is these, rather sodium retention, hypervolemia, rest activation, neurohumoral activation, inflammation, ischemia, and alter energetics. And what actually it leads to? It leads to a dysfunction at the level of the heart and kidney. So we need a molecule, particularly tackling these particular phenomena so as to improve the patient of diabetes. And we all knew SGL2 inhibitors, once they came into uh, in our armamentarium, they probably changed the whole scenario in 2015 with the empire outcome. But that didn't lead us to be compliant. Basically, we still waited for more and more trials. And thereafter, over the years, over the last five or six years, we have seen various trials with different molecules coming out with all positive kind of insight into these molecules, which could give a, 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 a cardiologist a, 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 and a nephrologist as well a little bit of boost. Forget about the diabetologist. So now we are in the era of SGL2 plus SGLT. One inhibitors. Thereafter, this sotaglucosin, a small molecule has come into being. We all are aware that in the kidneys, SGL2 inhibitors and SGL2 one are found. Sorry, uh, these both uh, SGLT2 and SGLT1 are found on the brush borders of the membrane of the proximal tubule S1, S2, and S3 segment. Similarly, this SGLT1, which are also found in the BBM of the enterocytes and subepical vesicles uh, of the gut. And along with that, they're also found in the GLP-1 secreting L cells and the GIP-1 secreting K cells. Not only that, they are probably also expressed in biliary duct and have some kind of uh, expression also in the uh, alveolar epithelial type two cells. 
So they, they, this SGLT1 has a huge expression over lots of cells, and that might have an additional impact on whatever outcomes comes out with purely SGLT1 or a combination of SGLT1 and SGLT2. So from this particular slide, you can you will well re uh, realize that SGLT1 is a primary transporter for absorption of glucose and galactose in GI tract. But what is more important is the pharmacological inhibition of sotaglucosin is independent of insulin and does not depend on the kidney function, which is not the case with SGL2. In SGL2, it does require kidney function. So what actually happens? Suppose you wish to inhibit the SGL2 in only. This SGL2 when inhibited, definitely it will lead to a better profile as far as the glucose is concerned. But it will also uh, force the SGLT1 to work to the maximal transport capacity. And so if you have an inhibitor to both of them, they are going to have a synchronization and can lead to a better output as far as the glucose control is concerned. And along with the other pleiotrophic effect of both SGLT2 and SGLT1, because what we have realized through various studies that it has a potential effect on atherosclerotic risk in SGL2-1, which probably SGL2 with all the CBOT trials have not been able to establish to that extent. Definitely, it had been able to establish uh, its impact on heart failure, but definitely not all of them have been able to establish its atherosclerotic benefits. So once you have those two inhibitions, then obviously the SGL2 will be having inhibition of SGLT1 locally in GI tract and SGL2 will be having systemically uh, inhibiting in the kidneys. So ultimately what happens is that the absorption will be less and there will be increased glucose excretion. This is how both the molecules together will work. And this is what has happened. We all are aware that the, once diabetes sets in, we are already having a galaxy of comorbid conditions, particularly if you look into the Indian scenario, uh, which are always accompanying the, uh, this diabetes. But along with that, even before at the pre-diabetic stage, you might be having some macrovascular events or macrovascular modification, which might be happening. So there will be an opportunity of managing patients with diabetes and thereby prevent the heart failure or, and this has been very well shown by various studies, both at the preclinical stage of the disease where you have a lot of risk factors and the clinical stage of the disease by through these various programs like Canvas, Kidans, DAPA, CKD, Declared TME, Empareg and Bertis. What happened thereafter? When you have a detectable cardiac involvement, then you need to treat that. So in that also, we have a huge amount of trials like DAPA-HF and Emperor reduced, which have given us an insight that we can really treat heart failure. And probably those four legs on which the heart failure treatment was more or less destined, now it has another leg that's the, uh, I would say, the SGL2 inhibitors. And uh, we are still awaiting the, uh, the two such studies, that is the reserved injection fraction studies, uh, deliver emperor or deliver or determine an emperor, which will give us an idea about whether it has an impact on uh, heart failure with reserved injection fraction. So that is about the heart failure treatment, but all of them, all of them were actually managing the chronic heart failure. Uh, uh, then what happened thereafter? Then we have this particular trial, the Solaced Worsening Heart Failure Trial, which gave us an insight, look into whether we can manage the acute heart failure as well, or it can be included in the management of acute heart failure with or without diabetes. That's, uh, uh, that's one which could give an idea with other uh, trials as well. So, so we have moved away from a heart failure prevention to heart failure treatment, 
and now we are treating the acute heart failure with SGL2, uh, SGLTs, uh, SGLTs, whether it is a combination or a dual therapy, uh, particularly what we could realize from sotagliflozin trial, that is through the soliest WHF trial. And this is what you see basically. Till now, we were banking on those usual uh, molecules for heart failures. And what happened with this particular trial that it addressed the vulnerable period of an admission for worsening heart failure. So this, uh, they actually uh, upscaled this trial and thereafter in, uh, gave this uh, molecule at either at the hospital discharge when the patient has stabilized and has been put on oral therapy or even during the stay in hospital or up to three days of hospital discharge. So basically this molecule was introduced as a part and parcel of management of acute heart failure. But yes, definitely once the whole thing has stabilized and you have switched over from the IV diuretics to oral diuretics and your PNP level has come to a reasonable level and then they were introduced. But this is the paradigm I shift, I would say. This which has given us an idea about how well these kind of molecules can work. And we have definitely found this molecule with these few trials, which we will be talking about a little later, that definitely they can be given as early as possible, even in hospital while you're managing uh, 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 a patient who has been admitted for WHF. So uh, uh, we always knew about DEPA-HF and Emperor reduced that they definitely give us an idea about uh, reduction in heart failure or uh, hospitalization of heart failure or reducing in the incidence of recurrent heart failure. But then now with this solaced WHF trial, we are sure about that they can be given as early as in the hospitalized stage and within a few days of hospital discharge. So this uh, uh, the, 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 this is unique about this uh, sotagliflozin studies are that the, both the solaced and the sport study were prematurely terminated and the culprit is COVID. Very rare to get a, a kind of a conclusion from that. But that was the reason why the fund uh, uh, was stopped by the companies which are funding this program. And thereafter, we could not come to any uh, uh, the, the substantial conclusion which they were opted for, uh, they could not reach that. But even with whatever study we could make out from uh, these few, uh, these two, two of these studies, so last of scored, which were actually unveiled in the AHA uh, 2020 virtual meet and was simultaneously give, uh, was there in the New England Journal. And they clearly gave us an insight in what, uh, what is in the store. So this particular study, when we are looking into the uh, SOLAST WHF study, the inclusion criteria was admission with signs and symptoms of heart failure, treatment with intravenous diuretics, stabilized off oxygen, transition to oral diuretics, and the BNP and the NP, NT, uh, NTPR, uh, pro-BNP, Levels were some simultaneously 150 and 600, and obviously the patient were type 2 diabetes. Exclusion criteria obviously, it was not uh, the excluded entry the heart failure, uh, recent uh, uh, ACS, stroke, PCI, or cabbage, and EGFR of less than 30. And uh, the initially, the idea was to recruit around four, more than 4,000 patients, but ultimately. There were only 1,222 patients were randomized to equal group into sotagliflozin and placebo, and very few discontinuation was there from the study. And from this uh, completed study, which was follow-up follow -up was maximum of eight, nine months, and thereafter maximum of 22 months. And uh, if you see the baseline characteristics between the sotagliflozin and placebo, they batch equally and uh, particularly as far as NTPA, pro BNP or EGFR is concerned, they almost matched. What was more important is that LBEF was around 35 in both the groups. And, uh, 
and if it, uh, if you see the results the primary efficacy which was uh, total cv death and hospitalization heart failure and urgent heart failure was zero there were a statistical uh, significance you see the uh, residual risk was uh, reduction was about 33% and that was a huge one you see a study for such a short duration of time giving such a great impact obviously it has to uh, be verified with a larger trial and it should be going on for, for uh, looking for the future trials but definitely this itself can give an idea about how efficacious it was in particularly in these three modalities that was total cv death hospitals and heart failure and urgent heart failure research and it started very early in the days but if you see at the end of 28 days only it was so significant the risk reduction was at the tune of 39% and uh, so early in the uh, uh, the, the, the graph started dividing and even at, as early as 28 days we get a huge risk reduction in these three parameters if you individually see into total cv death and hospitalization heart failure there was a risk reduction of about 32% and if you see the first of cv death or hospitalization heart failure there was a, a risk reduction of about around 30% and if you see the efficacy testing of this sotagliflozin uh, uh, vis-a-vis the placebo probably the sotagliflozin scores at, uh, at all level basically if you see whether it is uh, um, uh, modalities of total CV then hospitals heart failure urgent CV uh, urgent heart failure visit or as others I have already outlined along with that the all cause mortality was also not statistically significant but numerically significant but definitely a uh, better change in uh, the KCCQ 12 score points as well and adverse events as expected were we have a major concern obviously was the genital mycotic infections and diarrhea along with a little bit of hypovolemia and that is what we always see with any SGL2 inhibitors as, uh, as well but diarrhea was added to it because of the SGLT1 inhibitor profile uh, if you see the various subgroups uh, uh, try to look into the subgroups because uh, uh, the geographical regions, whether the first study drug dose, sex, age, everywhere, so glucosin outscores the placebo. But what is more important in this parameter, if you see, there was a good number of patients, uh, roughly around 20 25% of the patients who had a preserved ejection fraction by the definition of left ventricular ejection fraction of more than 50. So, probably this is the one such molecule which, after obviously, Dr. Bansi Sab has already talked about that. Uh, DEPA also tried to give a, give an idea about uh, its efficacy in preserved ejection fraction. But this uh, one particular study, where we could see that he, uh, there are about 20% uh, of a patient where uh, had a preserved ejection fraction, uh, there'll be was more than 50. These patients also had uh, 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 quite a good kind of impact this sort of closing so uh, obviously this definitely uh, will give us a, 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 a will give a boost to these dual inhibitors in future as well so to conclude the soto uh, this soliest uh, whf trial that he the uh, we can always say that they definitely reduce the composite endpoints of cv death hospital heart failure and urgent heart failure and by almost 33 percent but what was more important the benefits were seen as early as one month and initiation was even prior to the discharge and some of the benefits were also seen in preserved ejection fraction so now we moved, move over, over to the scode that is the other trial which again was unfortunately along with Solized was prematurely terminated because of the same reason, where they tried to look into the effect of sotagliflozin on cardiovascular and renal events in patients with type 2 diabetes and moderate renal impairment who were at the cardiovascular risk. And 
particularly the patients with inclusion criteria where the most important was the EGFR was between 25 to 60 and CV risk factor means at least one major if age is more than 18 or two minor if the age is more than 55 years. The exclusion criteria is planned use of SGL2 inhibitors. And these were the other salient features which were included there. And you could see the mean glycated hemoglobin was about 8.3%. The blood pressure was about 139 by 78. And uh, uh, albumin creatinine ratio about 75. And most of the patients were on RAS inhibitors. So, so what we could inter, uh, 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 in, interpret from this particular study was that uh, Result definitely indicated that SOTA glucosin had a salutary effect on CV outcomes among patients with type 2 diabetes and CKD. And it was prime, the benefit was primarily in the reduction of heart failure events, but there was also reduction in CV death, MI stroke. That is what we talked about the anti semic or anti atherosclerotic effect. And that was primarily due to reduction in MI and stroke. And I would say that is, this is the only study which is a clear cut pointer in various. Uh, the various SGL2 inhibitor studies, uh, this study has a definite positive impact on reduction in stroke and MI. A reduction in renal image was obviously not ob uh, observed because of early sensation. So we can conclude that sotagliflozin has a salutary effect on CV outcome among patients with type 2 diabetes and CKD. So it is one, uh, sotagliflozin is a dual inhibitors and primarily uh, acting at both places as gut as well as uh, kidneys. And you are aware it's SGLT, SGLT1 impact on kidneys is much, much less because of its expression is less in uh, kidneys, but it has a huge expression at the gut. So the impact at the gut level is quite high. And the results of this trial are similar to those noted with cannabis in the credence trial and with emphaglifos in the MPAREC outcome trial. In addition, in the DAPA CKD already discussed, um, which reduced the renal events in the absence of type 2 diabetes. But what was more important is that these group of patients who were enrolled here, they were with and without microalbuminuria, with and without proteinuria. So this is another trial which clearly, though we are still waiting for the subgroup analysis of the DAPA CKD trial, but this definitely showed that it can have a huge impact both for patients with albuminuria and without albuminuria. So, uh, uh, then considering that, if you, uh, uh, what we can only add out here is that the probably uh, introduction of SGLT1 to SGLT2 inhibitor will definitely have an added beneficial e effects uh, uh, over and above what we have already seen with SGLT2 inhibitors and they, those have already been discussed over the last few days. And uh, so uh, this class looks uh, great. And what I can actually summarize is, if I take all the key opinion leaders' view, who had opined that the results from this particular two studies are definitely encouraging, and uh, 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 and the major takeaways would be that like it was introduced during hospitalization or within few days of discharge. Uh, it may work in patients with normal albuminuria in CKD. It might work in patients with preserved injection fraction. And lastly, that the ischemic benefits are of importance. What we have seen with this particular trial, that the ischemic benefits, particularly the stroke benefits, were clearly seen. Uh, but I would rather like to emphasize, see, this study was a very short study on which we are trying to make all the conclusions. But and uh, more such studies will be needed to outline uh, to understand its use potentiality. So uh, I will try to conclude here because I know we are already short of time and Dr. Mishra is waiting for his talk. So thank you all. So I just give you insight into these two trials.